They say the American market is a gold mine for European entrepreneurs, but how do you stand out in the competitive landscape? I'm Christina Robafe Broadus, the American Market Alchemist, and I believe that anyone can write their U.S. success story to amplify their influence and scale their impact beyond the borders of their home market. In this podcast, you'll hear inspiring stories and practical advice from American market experts and European entrepreneurs who are making an impact in the U.S. Tune in each week for a dose of motivation and tactical tips to build your influence and visibility in the world's largest market so you stand out, attract more clients, and turn your European business into American gold. Now, let's dive in. Now, in today's episode, we're going to talk about how to boost your sales with American customers. So if you are you know, you have a business in Europe and you're ready to grow that business on the other side of the Atlantic, or at least just get American clients without leaving Europe, then the tips in this episode will help you to basically just land American clients and increase the revenue for your business, which I think honestly is something that we all want to do. I have never met an entrepreneur who said, no, I'm good. I have plenty of money and plenty of clients. So if getting more clients and making more money is one of your goals, then this episode is for you. All right. So yeah, like I said, if you are in any kind of service-based industry, if you are a I don't know, web developer, a digital marketing expert, a founder of an agency, a coach, a lawyer, anything like that, then this week's episode is for you. And we're going to really dive into how these European service providers can secure clients from the American market, even without having to be physically present in the U.S. I know a lot of people say that, no, 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 we, we must have a physical presence. At some point, you may, but it's not an obligation from the beginning, especially if you're doing any kind of work that can be done remotely. And I've known plenty of, of coaches and, and clients and lawyers and things like that who have who work with lots of American clients, mainly American clients, and who are based in places like Germany or Slovenia or here in France. So why would a service provider want to make that effort of going and, and getting American clients? Well, just generally expanding your client base internationally, whether that's in the US or just across the border from where you live, you know, that can bring you significant growth opportunities. It can help you to diversify your revenue streams when something in your home market comes and throws a wrench into your business. Like for, for my own business, I'm here in France. This whole, if you're in France, you'll know what I'm talking about when I talk about the CPF, Calliope, all of that. And to, to be honest, it really made things very difficult for us in the beginning of the year. And looking outside of the French market has really been something that I would, I almost want to say saved our business because we didn't depend totally on that one stream of revenue. So di diversifying your revenue streams to protect yourself against the ups and downs of your whole market, that is always a good idea. Of course, the US, it's a bigger market. It's one of the biggest in the world. And generally, customers make faster buying decisions and they have higher budgets. And they're also, you know, it's in American culture to pay for services, which is not the case in, in some countries um, where, you know, people expect services to be free or they simply don't want to pay for them. They want they would prefer to try to do it themselves. America is a service based economy. So if you are providing services, well, you have a huge market waiting for you. and. If you learn how to attract and retain these American clients, like I said, your business just becomes more robust, more resilient, more successful. And it's not as hard as you may imagine, especially if you already have a profitable business in your home market. Now, if you are just getting your business off the ground, I would say you maybe want to make that choice. Do I focus on my home market first or do I go all in and build a business? for the U.S. market from the start. But if you already have a business in your home market and it is profitable, then uh, this advice is going to be for you. Now, 
unfortunately, a lot of the clients that I have spoken to, even just recently, I've got the feeling that having clients in the U.S. for them was not an immediate goal for them. It was like, yeah, it would be nice. I want to maybe someday, but I have to do these other things first, et cetera. Now, maybe that is the case uh, and that's fine because I know that when you're building a business, you have to avoid shiny object syndrome. You want to really have your strategy and focus on that. So I can understand why they might be hesitating. But if this, if looking for American clients, getting American clients for your business, that is part of your strategy. And you're feeling that some of the challenges, they're just impossible or you don't know where to start. We're going to address some of those today. Now, what are some of the biggest challenges that I've seen? Uh, the first one is maybe just the fear of wasting your valuable time, money, and energy. Like I said, you're thinking maybe I don't know how to do this. I don't know where to start. I'm not sure that I'm going to get results. Is is this where I need to be focusing on? And if you're stuck in that, well, then you you might not even try. Now, there's some processes that we can go through to identify if it is the right time and if it's worth it to actually try. Uh, but that would be a, maybe a, a topic for another episode. Um, another thing that's holding them back when I go and I start looking at their profile online, it's the lack of a strong professional presence in English. And, and I, yeah, of course, we're talking about your website, but also your presence online. If you have been on podcasts, uh, you surely have a LinkedIn profile. At least you should mit very bare minimum have a profile in English. Or, you know, any other kind of media where they can learn about you. The things that you might immediately have is a website and a LinkedIn profile. Just get something up in English very simply, but at least it's done and then you can optimize it later. And that's something that I could help you with. But if you're trying to get American clients and none of your online presence is in English, that's going to be almost impossible. Another thing is, and I, I don't think this is specifically for the American market. I've seen this in just marketing in general, but inadequate personalization. If you're sending generic, impersonal messages that don't resonate with your potential clients, that don't show them that you've spent a little bit of time learning about them and their situation, then your message is just going to fall flat. And this is, I would say, just even more true for the American market where Americans are all about personalization. Like we have monogrammed, when I was in high school, my backpack had my name embroidered on it. Like we love personalization. So if you're sending the same message to a hundred people, you're doing it wrong for sure. But again, that I think that's not limited to the American market. It's just amplified in the American market. And then of course, my favorite is the cultural and the language differences because yeah, misunderstandings will happen if you are not mindful of cultural and language differences, especially in business communication. So if you sound a little off in your communication, then you're going to just have a harder time winning their trust. Now, this does not mean that you have to speak like an American, that you have to have an American accent, that you have to have perfect English but you want your message to resonate with your American clients. And that's uh, something that you can do, of course, even if English is not your native language. But uh, again, that's something that, that, that we could work with you on to help you. So how can you overcome these challenges and successfully get American clients? Well, the first thing is really tailor your outreach strategy to the expectations of your American prospects. You know, Americans, we appreciate directness, clarity, results-oriented approach. We want to know what, you know, what's in it for me, basically. How can you help me? And when you're doing outreach, you want to show that you understand these values and these expectations with clear, concise language, highlighting the tangible quantified, if possible, benefits of your services right up front. And if, you're do, if you do that, you just increase your chance of resonating with your potential clients. It is as simple as that. Um, a couple of examples. Let's imagine you are a, a web developer. You might 
highlight how your responsive design increased your client's mobile traffic by 50%, and that led to a 30% increase in their sales, for example. If you're a digital marketing expert, you can share a case study where you show that your social media strategy grew your client's follower base by 40% in three months. For example, I'm just making these numbers up. But you want to be able to quantify it if possible. If you've got American clients, use those case studies. If not, use what you have. Again, done is better than perfect. And if you're a coach, you can talk about how your coaching program helped your entrepreneur client streamline their operations. It saved them 10 hours of work per week. It allowed them to take Fridays off every week. Uh, just increase their productivity. But you see how you, if you quantify it and make it concrete, it's much more powerful than just say, I helped this client be more productive. The second thing that you can do is optimize your online presence for American clients. Really showcase your success. If you're going into the American market, this is not the place to be modest and to be afraid of bragging, let's say. We, we want to know that you're successful. We want to see that because we value success stories. We value proven results. And like I said, it's always better if you can put a number to it, whether that is time, money, anything else. And especially if you're helping to save them time or save them money or make more money. You want to make sure that your website and your social media profiles really prominently feature testimonials, case studies, awards, recognitions, anything that tells your prospect, I can trust this person. They know what they're doing. They are an expert. And if you're not doing this, then that's that, you know, that just is going to create a lack of trust. They, already they don't, they may not know you. You're in a foreign market. So that just for better. I mean, it's the way it is. We we might tend to have a little less trust. And by showing, you know, your credentials, and I mean that by credentials, I don't mean your diplomas. I mean the results that you've gotten. That's what we're interested in. That's just going to help to increase your trust factor. Again, um, let's take an example of a um, a client I've, I've, I'm working with, a digital marketing agency. You might want to include a testimonial that says something like, you know, working with Christina's company has revolutionized our online presence. Our website traffic doubled within six months, and this led to a 25% increase in sales. We made a 20% return on our investment with Christina's program, for example. Um, social media, let's, you know, let's say you're working with your clients to help them on their social media strategy. Post a case study where you detail how you helped the client, I don't know, improve um, their social media posting routine. And again, if you can screenshot diagrams to show that you've increased their, their number of followers, that you increased the number of leads, that you increased their revenue, show that, like be proud of those results. And if you wanna share your case study, don't just say, this is what we did with this person. Really let your prospect visualize what it's like to work with you. Show them what was your client's problem? How did you analyze it? What did you discover? What measures did you put in place? What were the results? Because like I said, your prospect should be able to visualize, if I work with this person, this is what's gonna happen, and these are the results that can I, I can expect. And if you can do that, it's almost like you're building instant trust, or at least you're getting much, much closer to that trust factor. They'll probably want to talk to you to, to see if they, they trust you. But if you really lay the foundation, when they get on a meeting with you, then they're already in that mindset of, you know, yeah, I, I, this person, they, they know what they're doing. I can trust them. I just want to find out some details. The third thing and the final thing is, my favorite, cultural and language considerations. Just mind the culture and language gap. And I cannot insist enough on this one. You really have to understand 
what are the cultural expectations? What are the language nuances? Again, this does not mean trying to be perfect in all of this, but it means being willing to adapt your way of doing business and your way of communicating to just what is normal, what's expected in, in the American market. And I have, I have to do this myself when I'm communicating with French clients. And, you know, I know that you have to be a little more formal, that you have to use the formal you, uh, the vous, uh, instead of to immediately, um, most of the time, depending on, you know, it, it can vary. But again, it's all about knowing the culture and adapting. And this is not my natural way. I'm, I'm quite informal and and friendly and I tend to talk to people in a very casual friendly way even if I don't know them but I know that in France if you do that with the wrong people like a, a manager of a company then you know they don't appreciate that I mean I've, I've had people and I called them up and I was like hey uh Johan how's your business going and he's like who are you and I don't why are you calling me Johan we don't know each other and I'm like okay I'm sorry Mr. Dupont um, and for me, that is not natural and I don't like it. I mean, it's, it, for me, that sort of interaction is like, oh, I don't like this person. I feel very, they feel very cold and distant, but that's because I'm interpreting it with my American culture. Whereas in French culture, yeah, I, you know, maybe I should have said, you know, hello, Mr. Dupont. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Christina. A very formal type of conversation, which is not natural but it's how you have to adapt. And the same goes when you're going into the American market. It might feel a little uncomfortable to be speaking to someone in a very casual, friendly way when you're trying to do business with them and you don't know them, but that's often what's expected. You don't want to be too formal. You don't want to sound too aggressive. We really, we very often do business in a casual yet professional tone. So for example, instead of saying, you know, I would love to meet with you or I want to meet you with you to discover how I can help you. When are you available? You might say something like, you know, I'd love to chat with you about how, my, how we might be able to help your business grow. Any chance you're available for a call this week? So you can see the difference there. And there's a point that is often misunderstood. And it's this idea that Americans prefer directness. Yes, we do. We appreciate direct communication, clear communication, but it's important to balance that with friendliness and a casual tone. And this is one that I feel is very often misunderstood by a lot of Europeans doing business with Americans. Either they try to be direct, but they misinterpret direct to mean without all these nice formulas and, and things like that. No, in, in, in American business, we also use these like polite formulas so direct doesn't mean like aggressive and dry. It means just be clear in your message, but be nice and friendly about it. Or another mistake is that they'll send a very long email with a ton of context to tell the story and the background and blah, 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 blah. And they build up to the main point, maybe five paragraphs into the email. And by then the person has stopped reading your email anyway. So you want to get to the point quickly, but politely and this is what we talk about this is what we mean when we talk about being direct in american communication a good example might be you know hey john i noticed your recent product launch and i wanted to discuss how our services can boost your success now of course that is just a framework you would adapt that you would personalize that with specific details what product are you talking about where did you see the information about their product launch? What kind of service do you offer? And boost your success is really quite generic. So you might want to say, you know, how we can, I don't know, increase your lead generation by 30%, something like that. Again, it requires knowing your client, but that's part of the personalization is showing that you have done that research. Keep it simple. Imagine that you're, a write, you're writing to a nine-year-old child. In other words, avoid jargon, avoid fancy Latin-based words. If you are using any of that, you're going to lose them immediately. So if you're doing that and your efforts are falling flat, this could be one of the reasons. 
All right, that's all for this week. I would love to know what strategies you have found effective for getting American clients if you're already working with American clients, or if you're not, what questions do you have about your own specific practices? Is there something you want me to look at? You can put it in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. In other words, I will see you next week. Thanks for listening to the American Market Alchemist podcast. If you're ready to amplify your influence and scale your impact in the U.S. market, become a member of my newsletter community. You'll get weekly tips on LinkedIn strategy, personal branding, and digital marketing to write your U.S. success story. The link to get the newsletter is in the show notes. I'm Christina Robafe-Broadus, and I'll talk to you next time.